Hello everyone, and welcome to part 4 of how to make a point and click game in Unity. So last time we made it so our block can jump out of the bottom of the screen at random positions with random velocities, which creates this cool effect. And now I'd like to start working on implementing the crosshair so it can move around the screen. And what I wanted to do is follow my mouse cursor. That way I have some sort of targeting thing that I can use when I'm shooting these blocks out of the air. So to begin, I want to just add a new script and name it cross <coughs> Crosshair. I don't want to add any physics because I don't want this to interact with physics and accidentally collide with these other blocks. So here we are. Now the thing about making an object follow the mouse is a bit tricky because your mouse is on di a different coordinate series than your um, than the game objects. And I'm just going to create this little print statement just to prove it. So to show you what I'm talking about with different, with your mouse being on a different coordinate plane, I created this print statement that will print the um, mouse's position in the x and y axes and we'll just compare them to real world coordinates. So about here in the real world is 0, 0. But as you can see from this debug panel, it's more like 600, 300. This is because your mouse is running on a coordinate system where the top, where the um, bottom left of your screen is 0, 0. Your top right is whatever the screen's resolution is. This gets problematic because it's not always a smooth transition from your real world coordinates to your screen's coordinates. Now the main workaround to this issue is a special function in the camera that converts the mouse coordinates to the screen coordinates. Which means what we're going to have to do is make it so this script is actually a part of the camera. And then based on that, move this game object. So what I'm going to do is move this script to the camera. And then, that way I can access the camera component. So since we cannot use our use this, we're going to scrap it. And what we're going to do instead is just, I'm going to use print, write this in print just to prove that this actually works, that it converts the coordinates. We're going to use this dot get component. Camera dot screen capital S screen to world point of input dot mouse position. Okay. Let's see if that worked. Oh, I made to a small error. This M is actually supposed to be lowercase. Okay. And now, center of the screen, as we know, is zero, zero. And yeah, this seems about right. However, you may notice that there's this negative 10 value here. That is because our main camera is at negative 10 on the Z axis. And what screen to world point does is show the XY positions of the mouse and the Z coordinate of our camera. Because of this, our crosshair is going to be like right next to the camera. We can easily modify this, but this is actually a good thing because we want it to be behind all of our objects that are moving around. 
So now that we have our real world coordinates, it's a matter of applying them to our crosshair right here. And the way we're going to do that is that we're going to find this crosshair in our script and then set these transform values equal to your mouse equal to this statement. So to begin, I am going to create a few variables. First will be a vector3 type variable named position. We're going to set it equal to this big line of code. And what this is going to do is store both the x, y, and z components into this value. This is because it'll let us create a position.x, identify position.y, and make it so we can choose whether or not we actually want to use position.z. The next variable I am going to make is going to be target. And what this is going to do is find a game object named crosshair. What this statement does is find a game object in our scene with this name and it assigns it to this variable. And if I were to click play, go to our camera, oh, we can see that our coordinates are showing up but now we need to make it so you know smooth the crosshair. The way we do that is just like how we would move any other object. We're going to say target because we want to access this variable dot transform dot position equals POS. And what this does is move our object, our crosshairs position to whatever value is stored in here. But there's a small problem. It disappears from our game view. This is because it's at z equals negative 10, the same spot as our camera is on the z-axis. And because of that, it's not possible to see it because it's technically behind the camera. Now, the way we're going to fix this Instead of using pose, we're going to make it equal a new vector3 and assign it to pose.x, pose.y. Instead of negative 10 for z, we can do like negative 9. And now, if I were to click play, you can see this crosshair moves around, and now if I wanted to, I can start sniping these blocks out of the sky. However, we still need to make it so the game knows when we clicked on the block and it proceeds to destroy that block. And that will be the topic of the next episode. We'll create a function in our block script in order to know when it's been clicked. It will destroy the block and it'll contribute to some sort of score that we'll put on the top left corner of the screen. But that sums it up for this episode. Thank you for, for watching, and goodbye.